met him perhaps around 1967, and he was doing his very, very deep work. His, his uh, books were coming out at that time and having a profound effect especially on the nuns. I was teaching at a Catholic college, Marymount College in Terrytown, and the nuns were finding all manner of personal epiphanies in the readings, uh, the reading of your, of your grandpa. And so uh, I was a very young teacher then, and they said, let's get Viktor Frankl here. And we got enough money together, which in those days wasn't very much. I mean, there was a lot for, a lot for that time. And, we brought him in, and I remember him as being a rather small man, uh, quite short, and I'm quite tall. You know, I'm 5'11", so he was to hear me. And he looked at us with great solemnity, and I was wondering, why is he looking so solemnly at all these little Catholic girls? But he, it was as if he was seeing something that we teachers often did not see. We talked about the state of the world, as I recall and his sensibilities about where we were and what was happening in the post-war years, and also the rising of the depths of the psyche and how how the enormous changes that one saw in the 20th century were acting, activating very, very deep changes in the psyche, but that the level of suffering that had ensued, at least in the first half of the 20th century, and this was 67, would result in a kind of repression. I've never thought of this before. Repression of the shadow, and we would not be dealing with the shadow. That was the nature of our conversation. And it's funny, just in talking to you, his, his grandson, this, this memory that I have completely forgotten about has come out. Yeah. And of course, that subsequently is what happened. Now, remember, this is 1967. And this is also the, the birth of the, the big 60s movement. The music is changing, the energy is changing, we're all having a whole lot of fun. And I realize now, in terms of his perspective, because we didn't see those big shadows. I mean, who was it? I guess it was uh, Bob Dylan was singing, uh, you know, something is happening and you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? And it was as if Mr. Uh, Mr. Victor Frankel was Mr. New and was informing all the Miss Joneses, you know, about what was really about to emerge. That was way beyond what, but it wasn't going to happen for another about six, seven years after this great explosion and expressiveness had taken its form. Between the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, the end of the Cold War, essentially, and the fall of the Twin Towers in 2001, we had a great parenthesis of time in the United States and in some other countries as well, in which to do our deep work on our own shadows. Because America had a ton of shadow, you know, from our treatment of indigenous people, black people, our own people, what we did to the lands. And we had projected that shadow onto very projectable European tyrants, Hitler, etc. And then at the end of World War II, we thought of ourselves as the goodest, the best, the kindest, the nicest, you know, the Marshall Plans, etc. And we reprojected the entire shadow under the Soviet Union, you know. And as I say, between the fall of the Berlin Wall and the fall of the 2001, those two towers, those two great huge walls, this parenthesis of time when we could have done something with this shadow. You know, it really had had a kind of national reflection. But we didn't. It became the time of the corpocracies, you know, and the cultures of greed, and we did not. So naturally, we got the incarnation of that same shadow in the neo-fascist form of the, of the last administration, didn't we? And he was predictive of that, as I recall in our conversation, of what would happen. That's what I remember.